Good day awesome folks, Is Awesome here bringing you another Pokemon X and Y Wi-Fi battle and this one is going to be a post commentary. Uh, the reason that I was post commentating it is because I haven't had a lot of time to prepare for round 2 of the PU tourney. So while I was um, da -da -da -da, battling my friend here, I was also setting up some other stuff uh, to help me with my breeding and things like that. But that's all a little technical BS that y'all don't need to know about right now. Uh, so yeah, I'm post comment. Also, a lot of you guys have said that you like post com and you'd like me to mix it up, throw a bit of post com in there as well as live. Um, and this one, I think, will benefit greatly from post commentary because it ends up being 42 turns long. The meaning of life, 42. If you don't know why I'm saying that, then uh, please Google 42, the meaning of life, and read everything to do with it. Seriously. You'll, you'll thank me. You'll be enriched at the end of it all. Anyway, so this was supposed to be a UU battle. Um, as you can see, I am bringing a Zapdos and an Infernape. Now, before this battle, I did check two different tier lists on Tinternet from what I thought were reliable sources. But it turns out, Infernape and Zapdos are OU this gen. Ah. <sighs> So I'm really sorry about that Absol Knight. He was really cool about it. He completely understood and he was fine about it. And he said it didn't impact the battle too much. Um, well, to be honest, I'm not sure if it impacted the battle. You guys will have to let me know if you think my bringing those two Pokemon affected this battle. Uh, but, uh, you see, the only reason he knew that they were OU is because he checked on Showdown. I didn't think to do that. I thought looking at tier lists would be enough. But yeah, it turns out the tier lists I was looking at weren't up to date. So I'm really sorry about that guys, it might seem like I have an unfair advantage, and I guess in a way I kind of did, um, but I don't know, I don't know, uh, I, I really felt bad about bringing the OU stuff. That's if it really is 100% OU, I mean Showdown could be wrong, it might not have updated, maybe the tier lists are wrong, maybe they didn't update, if somebody wants to definitively link me to a source that will let me know for sure whether or not those guys are OU, that would be smashing, thank you very much. And if you guys are all like, hey, hey, what are you talking about? Of course Zapdos and Infernape are OU. Hello? Volcarona in UU? Chansey, I believe, got moved down to UU? You kidding me? You kidding me now? Come on. <laughs> anyway, guys, so yeah, I am bringing the Choice Specs. No, why would I bring a Choice Specs? I'm going to bring a Choice Specs Scrafty to a battle now, guys, because I've said it. I've said it, so it needs to happen. Anyway, we're bringing the Assault Vest Scrafty, the Rocky Helmet Bro for Show, uh, otherwise known as Slow Bro. I always call him Bro for Show instinctively now. Um, obviously, the Choice Specs Boom Burst. Boom Box, who is the X Bloud. Uh, the Choice Banded Joy Infernape for that speed and power combo. We are bringing the Physically Defensive, Leftover Zapdos, and Life Orb, Specially Offensive, Beastly Mr. Mime Clown of Doom. Our opponent is bringing. A completely UU team <laughs> of Florgis, who is an absolute tank. Uh, this thing, wow. Honestly, this thing causes so many problems in this battle, you're going to love it. Steelix, which I think is an amazing Pokemon. I really wish it would see more play. Uh, Floatzel, again, another awesome Pokemon with a quite a decent move pool, actually. And when it's Bandit, it has so much potential. Uh, Go Go, I love this Pokemon so much. I need to breed me one. If any of you guys would like to do that, then feel free. I'm always open to donations. <laughs> Absol, of course, because I've never seen this man battle without Absol, unless the theme he's battling in doesn't actually allow for Absol. And Chatot. Now, people sleep on this thing, but Chatot is so powerful. I mean, obviously, it doesn't have the raw power, but it's got a lot of a lot of chicanery, a lot of trickery up its feathery sleeves, as you'll see in this battle, guys. So, yeah, this is a nice, fun battle. It's quite long, but it won't be too long for you all. Uh, sorry for blabbering on for so long. Let's hit that play button and get this battle underway. Now, who do you think our best lead would be? I don't know who I think it would be, based on that. Let me know down below who you think the best lead from that team would be. That would be amazing. Yeah, so we do decide to go with Oob, uh, because I figure that Oob has moves to hit most of his team with super effective damage. Uh, I did think the only Pokemon that would really cause us problems if it came out first would have to be the freaking Chatot. And what does he bring out first? The Chatot. So now we have to switch out and give him the opportunity to set up the obvious Chatter. I say set up because it basically is an attack that causes 100% guaranteed confusion. But no, he doesn't do that. He, I presume, predicts the switch or just wants to get a sub up regardless uh, and decides to go for substitute, which is really, really awful because now we have to break this thing's sub, hope we break through confusion, then break its sub again because it will have subbed up. Well, no, actually, yeah, because it is faster than us. So it will have subbed up. Then we need to break through confusion twice in order to hit it. Sub up confusion, sub up confusion, blah 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 blah. And as you can see, we get pwned by the confusion. 
no fun for anyone. Well, not for us. <laughs> I'm sure Absol was having an amazing time. So yeah, Zapdos is just kind of floating there, flapping his wings, all confused, pecking himself in the face. Wow, how can you peck yourself in the face? Do you think that's possible? No, of course it's not. What am I even asking for? Insanity. Oh yeah, check this out, guys. We get hit. We hit ourselves in confusion again. So this thing gets more lefties recovery, gets the chance to set up more subs in the future, gets to get more damage off on us. Ah, uh, something. Uh... Yeah, I was not very happy at this point in time. I mean, obviously, not. I wasn't mad at my opponent whatsoever. Completely legitimate strategy. Nothing wrong with that at all. Just so goddamn annoying. I mean, look at this thing. Oh, we finally break out of confusion. Get that nice and tasty thunderbolt off, and that is, as you guys may not be surprised to hear, gonna take out that sub. The only problem is we are still confused, and this thing is still faster and can still set up another sub. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? This thing is surprisingly fast. It has an attack that causes definite confusion. It has access to Boom Burst. This thing doesn't have Boom Burst, unfortunately, because uh, my opponent didn't realize it didn't land it through level up until he'd already bred it, which is unfortunate. So he decides to switch out at this point into Farron Woods because he knows that the sub strategy is not the best strategy to go for uh, against Zapdos with that super effective Thunderbolt. So he goes into his specially defensive wall and look how much damage that doesn't do. That's like a fifth HP. And with a Wish Protect Leftovers Pokemon like this, a fifth HP might as well be no HP. Yeah, look, here's the leftovers. And I know this thing's carrying Wish Protect. I knew it was carrying Wish Protect before I battled it. Uh, so we decide to stay in, thinking that this thing's not too offensive. Even though we're not doing too much damage at a time, maybe we can get the para. Maybe we can manage to para it at the right time so it can't get its wish off. We can get another pivotal hit in. You know, or at the very least, wear it down, get it parried, and send in something like Oob to take it off. Because I know Oob can take a Moonblast and then get off a Poison Jab. But... The problem is, is that it's normally fast. Florgis is actually, believe it or not, despite being a plant, is normally faster than Scrafty. So check this out. We send an Oob, uh, predicting the Protect right now, because it's just used Wish. I don't, uh, but then again, uh, what I should have realized is, is that uh, Bath and Dodger wasn't doing that much damage to it. So it's in its best interest to get more damage off on us, and then get the Wish back, you know, to heal all of its HP. Thundarger, by the way, is a present from PKM and Gravager. That's why it's got the same name as his Zapdos. So it comes a protect, a protect, so our opponent can predict what move we're going to go for. We, of course, go for the Poison Jab for the super effective damage. Our opponent withdraws here, probably not knowing that they're faster naturally and that we don't have any uh, speed investment. This is a bulky Scrafty. Uh, he does send in, of course, the Steelix, which takes that Poison Jab like an absolute champ, but I know we naturally outspeed Steelix, so we go for that 4 Blah, blah, blah. That two times super effective drain punch get lots and lots of yummy HP back thanks to that crit. Thank you, Hex Gods. Uh, yeah, but we know, of course, especially after the Citrus, that another drain punch will not KO because that crit only took it down to just under half. So we have no chance of taking this thing down uh, in one more hit. So we have to hope this thing doesn't go for a powerful attack that can KO us. And we go for another drain punch. However, 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 however. He does get a chance to set up his Stealth Rocks, which is going to cause us some serious problems, because we have Infernape and Zapdos. Two Pokemon weak to that particular hazard. We get off a Drain Punch, which does a surprising amount of damage, all things considered. Now, I debated heavily at this point whether it would be better to stay in and use the Poison Jab and hope that our opponent goes for a Wish or a Protect, or, you know, expecting us to switch. Um... Or just trying to get a um, sort of a safe switch into something else. But I decided at this point to switch in a specially defensive beast. Uh, because Mr. Mime, believe it or not, has some insane special defense naturally. So I thought he'd be able to take this Moonblast really, really well. Ah, uh, yeah, no. No, he doesn't. I know he has quite bad HP, but still, I was really expecting him to take that so much better than that. Uh, so right now, I think that our only move is to either switch out or to go for an icy wind because friends if we stay in and go for an icy wind we won't get much damage off but we will slow this thing down meaning that scrafty can switch in outspeed it and get a poison jab off so unfortunately i'm so sorry it mr mime my friend we have to <laughs> I feel so bad saying this we have to let you get ko'd I'm so sorry. We have to let you get KO'd so we can get a safe switch into Scrafty who will then outspeed and be able to hopefully get the KO with the Poison Jab. So that is exactly what we're going to do. We let Mr. Mime go down. Sorry, my friend. This thing, this thing might be bulky and mainly a defensive wall, but look how much of a threat it's been so far. We don't have much to take it down and much they can safely switch into it anyway. 
So yeah, pointed stones looking to Mr. Ooh, but that's no problem at all. He doesn't care about that one little bit. We are going to get off our nice and tasty poison jab right into a protect. Oh, hello. Imagine how uncomfortable that must be, just jabbing your fist right into a wall of protective energy. Yowza! <laughs> that's probably why they instigated some sort of uh, protect style damage move in the form of uh, uh, spiky shield. So we get a nice and tasty poison jab off now, but it doesn't KO this thing, but we get the poison, and that poison is going to matter so much, because this thing with the leftovers recovery and the wish protect could have easily, 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 easily uh, stalled out a lot of our Pokemon and managed to get back pretty much all of its HP. Um, and it could still be pretty damn bulky and um, have a lot of sustain despite the poison. But we now decide to just go for broke here. Look, the poison is doing more damage than leftovers. For you guys who don't know, the Calc's poison does more damage than leftovers. So this thing is no longer getting recovery. It is getting a little bit of damage every turn. We send in Thundaja because we want to get rid of those rocks. And we figure this is our best opportunity to do that. Uh, because this thing can't do too much damage to us. But I think it's in our best interest to get off a Thunderbolt. So the next round of poison can KO this thing. Uh, and then try and hopefully uh, get rid of Rocks on the next turn. I knew he was going to go for a Wish to try and get himself sticking around for a little bit longer. So taking him down to the range where Poison will KO before the Wish can take effect was our best move. Because going for uh, Defog and then Thunderbolt would have meant that our opponent probably, maybe, could have got that Wish recovery. So now that Poison is going to take our opponent down. Unfortunately, whatever Pokemon he switches in, if it's taking damage, is going to get healed by that monstrous Wish. Because this thing has got decent HP, guys. So yeah, Amaral comes in, and uh, I know this thing carries the Ice Fang, I'm 100% aware of that, and I'm nervous of it, but this thing is physically bulky, this uh, Thundaja is physically bulky, I'm 99% sure he can take an Ice Fang, and he does, even though it's a Life Orb Ice Fang, he takes it quite well. Decided to go for a Roost so that we can have more HP left than we had uh, before the original Ice Fang, um, so that we can have an opportunity to try and go for some other moves, so we can use a move, Roost, move, Roost, you know? Uh... Even though our opponent outspeeds, we should be able to take two Ice Fangs from this range, especially with the lefty's recovery. So we should be able to use a move, Roost. Use a move, Roost. He realizes this and switches out into Tech. Now really unfortunately, for a split second, I forgot Tech was Steel Ground. I did think for a moment it was Steel Rock. A uh, complete noob that I am. Can't believe I, th I thought that. I've been battling with and against Steelix since Gen 2, what, like 13, 12, 13 years ago? Crazy amounts of years ago. Yeah. So yeah, we decide to stay in, go for a Heat Wave, knowing that Stone Edge won't be Stab, uh, and it won't actually do that much damage. This thing has a huge attack stat, but like I said, we are physically bulky, it's not Stab, and there's always a chance for the miss, and we have the recovery in the form of Leftovers. That Heat Wave I thought would KO as well, so I didn't think we'd have to take two, but luckily we are more than capable of taking two, I see, so I realise that this is our best opportunity to get that Defog on the go, especially because the Stealth Rocks user is about to be KO'd. We take another Stone Edge like absolute pros, go for the nice and powerful Thunderbolt. So I'm getting ahead of myself, guys. I'm so excited right now. We're about to go for a... Oh, we, got, we went for Roost. Of course we went for Roost. Sorry, I am I am playing like more of a noob post coming than I did in the battle. Yeah, we go for a Roost because even after Stone Edge, if it didn't miss, uh, even after Stone Edge, we would have had more HP than we had, obviously, to begin with in that turn. Um, so the Roost is the best option. I go for Thunderbolt here. No, I don't go for Thunderbolt. I could have not... I was, I was so... No, of course I didn't go for Thunderbolt. That's later on, guys. That's later on. That's against a completely different Pokemon. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, yeah, so we go for the Heat Wave. We pick up the KO and that Steelix, and that is wonderful. Because that thing is so bulky. We've got rid of the Stealth Rock Setter as well. And also... Yay! Because <laughs> the battle was starting to look a little bit tricky. A little bit risky. Tricky! A little bit risky. Uh, so we go for a Heat Wave here to get some nice and powerful, super effective damage off on this thing. It doesn't even do half. It does not even do half. I'm quite confident that we can take this rock slide quite well. We go first, so we don't have to worry about the flinch. Uh, if a stone edge from a Steelix can't take us down to below half, then a rock slide from a Go Go won't either. So we have more than enough opportunity to use heat waves and roosts and heat waves and roosts until the cows come home. Until the mill tanks come home to roost. Even though they don't roost, they milk drink. But you know what I mean? It's an expression. Get off my case, guys! I'm joking, I'm joking. I love you guys. Uh, okay, so Thundaja is able to take these attacks nice and well, gets that lefty's recovery to back over half, and can now KO with a Thunderbolt. This is what I was talking about. We go for the Thunderbolt here, uh, fearing the Floatzel to be switched back in. Uh, because this thing, this Go-Go could have been switched back in at uh, an optimal moment, um, and tried to use a Milk Drink to stay around, and I didn't want that. So I went for a Thunderbolt, knowing it would KO, and it would also hit most things, if not everything that he had left to switch in, quite hard. Especially this thing, because this thing is scurry. The Ice Fang, uh, coupled with an Aqua Jet, would KO. Uh, I presume he wasn't carrying Aquajet at this point. 
Um, I'm really, really thankful that he wasn't carrying Equal Jack Ross. He would have killed us earlier, I believe. Uh, so yeah, we get that nice Thunderbolt off. And that is some happy making stuff right there. That is a KO. I feel so bad because this OU Pokemon has KO'd so many Pokemon on a UU team. I almost wanted to switch him out, even though I didn't know at the time that he was supposed to be an OU. I really thought he was still UU this gen. So yeah, I uh, decided to uh, keep him in, but I was so tempted to switch him out because I kind of felt bad that Zapdos is just racking up all these kills and get KOs and gaining all this momentum. But in comes Absol Knight, the powerful Absol, and I've seen this thing, I've battled this thing before, and I am fearful of it. It is a powerful Pokemon. I was very, very worried about Sword Stance when I went for the Roost, uh, but I was confident that we could take one attack um, boosted with Sword Stance and then counter with a Thunderbolt. And that would at least be some damage off on this thing that doesn't have recovery and potentially a para. So as you can see, we take that Night Slash really, really well. So we definitely would have taken an SD Night Slash well. We can easily take another Night Slash and go for a nice Thunderbolt. However, I'm well aware Thunderbolt won't KO. And we are going to have to take another Night Slash to the face. Which is going to knock out Thundarja unless it's a ridiculously low roll. <laughs> like the lowest of rolls would allow us to uh, survive this hit. But no, unfortunately Thundarja does go down this turn. But that was a great, great run from uh, Thundarja there. I think he done an amazing job. Such a great Pokemon. I really want to use him some more. In comes Infernape. I know the Mac Punch will more than be able to clean this thing up. And I figure it'll do some decent damage to Nodin, his only Pokemon left as well. However, what I should have thought, guys, what I 100% should have thought, is that we would outspeed Nodin and Absol Knight and should have just gone for the Thunder Punch, which would have been super effective and would have most likely racked up the KO right there. I mean, this thing is powerful as hell, but instead we stay in, we get all of our, nearly all of our health taken away and we get confused. So we have a choice here, guys. None of our Pokemon are in a good position to take this thing out except for our buddy Infernape. So we switch out here to get rid of the confusion and uh, we switch into Boombox. I know Boombox can take quite a few hits from this guy. He is surprisingly bulky. Max HP, max special attack. I also know that he's more than capable. The only Pokemon I'm confident, apart from Infernape, can take down this thing's subs in one hit. And I know that if we're going to have any chance of taking this thing down with Infernape, we need it to not be behind a sub. If this thing, if this thing is behind a sub and we send Infernape back out, then he'll be able to chatter us. And if for some miraculous reason uh, it doesn't KO, we'll be confused. Uh, and then most likely we'll hit ourselves, or he'll just, you know, somehow get an attack off on us. I don't know. But this thing needed to not be behind a sub, basically is what I'm saying here. So we keep battling against that confusion, fighting against it, railing against the confusion, fighting that off, getting the smelling salts under our nose, slapping our faces, nice loud boom bursts everywhere, but no. We hit ourselves in our confusion again. It's so unfortunate. Boombox has so much potential, but his, his lackluster speed uh, really let him down. Uh, because if he could have outsped this thing, he would have KO'd it in one hit. It's just that speed. But yeah, unfortunately, he is going to go down to this attack. Now, you might think, hmm, but maybe you should just try risking going for Infernape. But no. No, honestly, guys, I promise you 100%, the only move we could have gone for here is the move we went for. Bro for show. Bro for show is not especially bulky, but he is naturally bulky. So I know he can take a few chatters, and this guy has come through for me so many times. And plus I figure he's a slow bro! What does he care about confusion? He's not going to notice he's confused for like a day. So let's send him into the chatter, and I'm, I'm, I'm like 75% sure a Scald should break his sub. I don't know how bulky this thing is, I haven't used Chatot a lot. Uh, but yeah, I don't think it's very bulky, and I'm quite certain a Scald should be able to knock out that sub. And it does! So as long as we can keep breaking through confusion and keep getting those Scalds off, we'll be able to keep breaking his subs. You see where I'm going here? We keep breaking his subs, he'll eventually not have enough HP to sub, and then we can let Infernape come in and KO this thing. Unfortunately, in order to get a safe switch to Infernape, we will have to let something get KO'd, and I feel so bad about that, but it is literally the only way we can beat this thing. The rest of our team gets outspared, and the Confusion Hex is TOO REAL! So yeah, we have to just keep going for Scalds for days. Look at Bro for show, just absolutely destroying that confusion. He is squatting those little duckies out of the sky around his head. Pachow, pachow, pachow. He's just going for the skulls. I am so proud of this guy right now. Check this, check this, check this. He breaks through again and goes for skull. Bro for show, you are such a bro for show. Now this thing right now does not have enough HP to make another sub. And I'm 99% certain that Leftover's recovery will not give it enough HP to make another sub. This is happy making news, guys, because that means that whether or not we get the chance to switch in Infernape, this thing is going down. Bro for show, just to be 
that one level extra of awesome. Breaks out of his confusion right when we need it the most, scolds this thing, picks up the KO, and that is going to be the win! Now, I know you guys might be saying, yeah, but you only won because you brought OU stuff. Yeah, okay, right, fair enough. I understand that OU Pokemon have an advantage in some respects against UU Pokemon. I understand that. I appreciate that. But tiers, for the most part, I think, when it comes to things like OU and UU, they're fairly interchangeable. Things go up and down from those tiers all the time. I think if I was bringing, you know, UU stuff to PU, that sort of thing, that makes a big difference. Because, you know, you have Little Cup stuff in PU, and they're viable in PU for a reason. UU, however, people bring UU pokes to OU all the time, and there's a good reason for that. Um, I'm not saying that what I did was okay. It wasn't. I mean, if I'd have known they were OU, I promise you guys, I definitely wouldn't have brought them. Uh, oh, did I say UU? I mean, if I'd have known they were OU, I definitely wouldn't have brought them. Uh, anyway, uh, our opponent was perfectly fine with it. He was really happy with it. He said it didn't impact the battle too much. I think it kind of did. I mean, I think we could have brought another physical wall that could have handled his Pokemon quite well uh, from the UU tier that we have. Uh, but I do think it made a difference. I do feel kind of bad. Uh, if you guys aren't, you know, if you guys think that that win shouldn't really count and I shouldn't be happy about it, let me know in the comments and I will try and erase the happiness from my soul. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, big announcement! Big announcement! Uh, if you guys have stayed until the end, then you are rewarded with this big announcement. I will have a capture card within 15 days. I did think it was going to be six weeks. My girlfriend surprised me. Uh, we, uh, she's going to order it for me at the end of the month. That's right. In one week, actually no, in six days, I'm going to order my cap card. It should be here about eight days after that. So two weeks, 15 days tops. Capture card incoming, guys. Get hyped! Um, I won't be able to do a Wonderlock straight away, but I will be doing a Wonderlock uh, once I get a new copy of X or Y. When I can afford it, I'm poor. Uh, but I will be doing lots of streaming. Lots of freaking cap card quality streaming cap card quality battles we can bring back pft hopefully if my laptop decides to play ball it's been very very fussy lately uh, but yeah yeah so happy days happy days uh, thank you guys for sticking by uh, me uh, through this uh, period of inconsistent uploads um, and sort of where the quality goes from cap card to non cap card uh, you know like it's in some kind of cap card revolving door and um, so thank you guys for putting up with all of that palaver and for 83 subs 84 subs actually at the time of recording so thank you all so much your support even though I've had low quality videos, your support, even though I've been inconsistent in the past couple of weeks, really means a lot to me because I, I really do try hard to get stuff out for you guys as much as possible, but life has been really hard the past couple of weeks and my computer has not been playing ball, it's been breaking down all the time. So yeah, thanks you, thanks, thanks, thanks you so much. Thank you all so much. I genuinely love you all. You all are my favourite people. Stay awesome. Stay sizz awesome. Have a sizz awesome day and week and bye bye